This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today show is the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 Complete Wheel. The AccuForce wheel is made by Sim Experience, long time known for their full motion simulators and Sim Commander software to convert the Sim's output signals into motion. This is the same software that drives the force feedback in the AccuForce wheel, which means you're getting force feedback by the guys who specialize in taking simulation signals and turning it into motion, and now turning it into force feedback. Now, I was about to tell you that the AccuForce wheel goes for $1,299. However, as of today, Sim Experience is announcing new pricing, that is, while supplies last, that are going to be effective immediately. That means this wheel is now going for $999 instead of the normal $1299. And that's again, while supplies last, but a complete wheel kit for $999. That is for the complete steering system, base, power supply, and wheel rim, and software to drive it. They are also lowering the price significantly on the Your Way kit. That includes the motor, the power supply, and the software, and it leaves the wheel rim for you to figure out. The Your Way kit now goes for only $699 while supplies last. If you are looking to save even more money, then they also sell a DIY kit. This kit comes with a motor only in its raw casing along with the power supply and software and it goes for only $599 now while supplies last. And in that DIY scenario, it leaves it on you to build the motor mount, the wheel, the wheel adapter, buttons, shifters, anything else that you might desire. It is just the raw motor and what you need to power the thing. But with this new pricing at $9.99 for a complete wheel kit, I have to tell you, this is the least expensive direct drive wheel solution that I can think of. I mean, compared to Fnatic, even looking at a club sport package, you're looking at about $900 for a base and wheel rim or on the soon to be released podium, where you're looking at a grand for the base alone and another 400 or so for the wheel rim. Looking at a Bodner system that can run you over three grand for a motor alone, and then anywhere from 500 to $2,000 for a wheel rim to go on that. I mean, even the Feel VR wheel is looking to come out at $669. That wheel doesn't even exist yet, and we have no idea what it's gonna handle like. So at $999, this is looking like a pretty good option. Some of the main features of the Sim Experience AccuForce V2 Pro steering system are that it is a complete wheel package, meaning it comes with the base, the wheel, the power supply, and the software to drive it. The AccuForce features a 13 newton meter direct drive motor that reports back to the computer at up to 2000 hertz. It has a real time encoder that is updating at 50,000 times per second and the AccuForce also has up to 4,500 degrees of rotation with 16,000 pulses per revolution positional feedback. It also has lightning fast communication of two millisecond with one millisecond being to the computer and one millisecond being back to the wheel. It is a heavy duty wheel made of all metal construction along with a monster size all metal quick release. The wheel can be adjusted on the fly with the supplied Sim Commander software and it also allows for the addition of displays, buttons, or pedals through expansion ports. The wheel rim is an automotive grade 320 millimeter wheel with an Alcantara covering with red stitching and a center hub with 13 buttons in total and carbon fiber paddle shifters. We are testing the full AccuForce V2 Pro steering system and for $999 you do get quite a bit when compared to most of the other direct drive options out there. But for $999 it's still a lot of money for many sim racers so we really need to know what do we get for our money. So let's take a closer look at the AccuForce V2 Pro steering wheel starting off with the base. The base is a heavy duty unit in both mass and size. The base itself weighs about 15 pounds or so and is mostly made of metal. It has a casing that is unique in design to the AccuForce and also incorporates the mounting locations into the base. There is no adapter kit needed like most other direct drive wheels. Sim Experience does have an adapter plate set available for $45 that will raise the base and allows for five degrees of adjustment if an angle is needed. The design of the casing is cool in looks and functions and is a six-sided rectangular shaped box with gill shaped vents down the top and raised lettering logos running down each side. The front cover of the case is a carbon fiber plate 
that has a phone type jack on the left side for the wraparound cord and then a gigantic center hub with the base side of the quick release installed. The back side of the AccuForce is also made of metal with a large diameter six foot cable coming out of the back that will go down to the controller box. With its casing, the AccuForce is the best looking wheelbase of the current direct drive motors, but it lacks that industrial look that they have all become known for. The overall dimensions of the base are about 12 inches or 305 millimeters long to the end of the quick release, and then about six and a half inches or 165 millimeters wide. And then finally, about four and a quarter inches or 108 millimeters tall with the center point of the wheel hub being about 1.75 inches or 45 millimeters above the mounting point. The wheel rim that comes with the Pro V2 complete wheel rim incorporates a few of the different products sold separately by Sim Experience, and it all starts off with the center quick release hub. It is a machined aluminum automotive grade quick release that is huge. It measures in at almost two and a quarter inches or 57 millimeters wide. It has large tabs on each side for very easy operation of the quick release. It uses large ball bearings to lock it into position and you can just put the wheel on any way you want and spin it until you hear it lock into place. Very smooth, very simple, and very easy. From there, we move into the button box and paddle shifter part of the wheel. The main casing of the unit is made of plastic and a black finish. It features 12 buttons and four different quadrants around a typical tri-spoke wheel rim. It will actually work with any standard pattern wheel rim measuring anywhere from 280 to 350 millimeters in size. And the upper two quadrants of the buttons can be adjusted for those different size rims. The buttons themselves are a hard plastic rounded top type that have a medium level spring inside to give them a good amount of tension. Half the buttons are in black and the other half are in red to help in remembering their functions. The paddle shifter assemblies are made of metal and seem to be their own assembly bolted to the center hub. Off of each arm of the shifter is a carbon fiber paddle that is adjustable in distance from the wheel center to adjust for different size rims. There are also two screws on the back of each shifter that can adjust the resting point of the shifter from the wheel rim and then also the throw distance of the shifter when pressed. The carbon paddles are nice and long, measuring in at almost five and a half inches or 140 millimeters long and curved in shape to match the wheel. They have nicely sanded edges, so they also feel very comfortable in your hands and are very stiff when pressed firmly. The paddle shifters at the end of their throw hit an end stop. There is no button click or release of the magnets like some other paddle shifters on the market. As I mentioned, the center hub will work with any standard size wheel drill pattern, but when you buy the Pro V2 Complete kit does come with a generic type racing wheel. It is a black anodized tri-spoke center design with a wheel rim covered in black Alcantara along with a cool red center stripe and a Ferrari-esque red stitching down the seam. It is round in shape and measures in at 12 and a half inches or 320 millimeters wide. The wheel is also fairly thick with the grips being round and about one and a quarter inches or 31.75 millimeters thick and round in shape. The back side of the wheel has bumps to give your hand some grip on its exterior. And again, it's round in shape except for a little thumb indentation spot on each side. The center hub has the AccuForce logo on it and is actually a functional button making for the 13th button on the wheel set. The wheel set also includes mounting points for SLI type or phone devices and also has a USB 1.1 plug to connect them. And then lastly, on the back of the center hub, a phone type jack for the wraparound cable on the wheel side. The final main piece of the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 Complete Wheel Package is the power supply or controller box. It's a simple black box with an AccuForce by Sim Experience logo on top along with a vent for the cooling fan. On one side, we have the plug-in spots for the USB to the computer along with the plug-in spot for the analog pedals if adding them. And a secondary USB that is for the wheel hub when adding devices to the wheel rim. On the back side, we have the computer connector type power plug-in point and also the controller or data side plug next to it. 
The box measures in at 11 and a half inches or 292 millimeters long by six and a quarter or 159 millimeters wide and then three and an eighth inches or 79 millimeters tall. It also has four holes through the bottom tabs for easy mounting if desired. In addition, the kit also comes with a power cable along with an on and off switch and two USB cables three feet long each. The installation of the Sim Experience AccuForce wheel is pretty straightforward. Starting things off with the hardware side, I was once again saved by my RC S1 chassis in that it was already pre-drilled to accept this wheel. So four bolts and a slight wheel deck adjustment later, I had the base installed on the rig. The six foot cord reaches down to the controller box and I started with the big computer plug into its spot on the back. I then do the signal side of the wire and I take a little care because I was warned that this one is a bit more fragile and it is critical that it be plugged in straight. I then plugged in the USB cable into the house plug as I call it. There are two of them on the side. We use the one closest to the middle of the box. This then gets plugged into the computer USB and then finally plug the power cord into the box and plug it in. I am now going to install the wraparound cable into the base and into the wheel, but I'm going to keep the wheel off the base until after the base starts up and it calibrates rather than have it wind up my wire around the wheel and then put the wheel on the base. When I'm going to power the wheel down, I like to take the wheel off to make sure again it doesn't go crazy with the wraparound cable. And with that, the hardware side of things are done. Now getting the AccuForce set up on the software side of things or on your computer starts with a trip to the Sim Experience website. From there, you're going to go on the Products tab. You will find Sim Commander 4. And then on the bottom right side of that page, you will find the download spot for the file that we need to run our wheel. When you fire up the download software, it'll do a typical Windows install that you just follow along with and then you are finished with that. During the last step of the install, it will ask you if you want to launch Sim Commander. And it starts things off with the wizard. I can select and turn on Motion Sim, Sim Vibe, and or my AccuForce wheel. Sim Commander then searches for my known driving sims and creates launching buttons for them within the software. At this point, your AccuForce wheel should work with any of your favorite sims. Just hop in, calibrate your wheel, map your controls, and you should be up and running with basically generic force feed it back values. However, with Sim Commander, you can get a whole lot more out of your wheel. You can actually allow Sim Commander to set up your force feedback values within the games based on telemetry taken from the sim to make sure you're getting the most out of the wheel. You do this by going out on track on those generic settings. Turn a few good clean laps and then leave the sim, heading back into Sim Commander. I then go to the Control Center tab in the bottom right to access my settings. When in there, you go to the New tab and then select from the telemetry log. Sim Commander will then ask me for what sim. I select iRacing. It asks me the car track session that I am building my force feedback from. I select my clean lap and then the bottom right I select intelligent peaks and then OK. Sim Commander will then set up a launch button for that specific setup. You could then use that as your new iRacing setup or create another one based on every car track combination that you could possibly want if you find yourself wanting slightly different settings for each one and they can all be telemetry based. It will create a new launch button for each one within the software and you can create as many profiles as you feel you need for as many sims as you want. It'll just clutter the launcher a little bit more. Now the Sim Commander software is so much deeper than this and there are so many different ways to set things up and I could do an entire show just going over the software alone, but that's really once you've purchased it. It's not for everybody, so I'm going to keep things light in this department. But again, the tuning options are really endless. But at this point, I really did want to get out on track. I want to see what it can do while driving. So first things first, I fire it up by racing. I'd made a profile for both road and oval setups as these are the two series that I am already running and very used to the car's behavior. With the telemetry created profile, I immediately found the wheel's force feedback to be way too strong. So I turned that down and I felt a little more comfortable with the wheel. 
Even after turning it down, it was still higher than I wanted, and it was obvious I was using one of the big boy wheels. So I went back to the software, and I turned it down even more. And now, I was even more comfortable. The first thing that I felt in this wheel, once I got it out on track, was the road noise vibration. I happen to really enjoy the effect, but some may find it distracting, as most other wheels do not produce this much. But for me, it gives the wheel and the simulation more life and a touch more realism. The next most obvious thing about this wheel and shared by most direct drive wheels out there is just how freely the wheel will turn. Despite having significant force feedback resistance, you can tell just how little friction or additional drag that is within this wheel. It is quickly responsive to the very slightest of movements and the force feedback that you feel ramps up quickly and strongly without feeling like it's hitting you with a brick. When turning in for the corner, the force feedback resists your turn in, but it doesn't overpower your hands. As it increases, the delivery is smooth, yet very quick, and at the slightest hint of fall off in power, you know it's a change in handling, and not the clipping or running out of the wheel's power, but the loss of traction and the lightening of the wheel's load. The wheel delivers the different layers of force feedback well. You can distinctly feel the difference between a road bump versus a change in suspension and the counter forces needed to maintain your direction. While going straight, the wheel feels free of much resistance, with exception to the road noise and any bumps that you feel out on the track. It is only when the wheel is turned that you are met with the resistance of the wheel. The biggest advantage of a direct drive wheel is its ability to be strong when needed or wanted, and at the same time to be smooth and friction free when that moment is needed. The AccuForce did this very well. When driving hard and hitting or using the curbs, you will feel the hit of the bump through the wheel, but it becomes one of the many layers of the overall power of the wheel being delivered to you. You still have the other forces coming through, so if that hit causes the car to go light or on the border of spinning, you feel that in the wheel as well. The AccuForce wheel was also very rigid. The rim is stiff, the quick release has no flex, and the base itself is rock solid. This rigidity that I have only found on direct drive wheels is another level of realism, matching the strength and feeling of a real life wheel mounted in a race car with no flex or movement other than the intended direction of movement. That strength of the wheel and that rigidity combined will certainly test your rig's wheel deck. And this wheel is really only intended for serious sim rigs. In addition to iRacing, I did test the wheel on a variety of other sims using the Sim Commander software, and the force feedback results and the results I got from the wheel were very similar with each time. It's fast, it's strong, it's smooth, it's robust, it's rigid, all those great effects were the same across the board. But let's talk about some of the other features of the wheel while driving out on track. When racing, our hands tend to be on the wheel rim all the time that we're racing, making it a very important part or integral part of our racing experience. I found the AccuForce wheel to be the right size and shape to make me happy, but perhaps the wheel rim itself was just a little too cushioned for me. It was not my favorite wheel rim, but it got the job done and it would be fairly inexpensive and like I said, only six bolts away from being changed out. The paddle shifters were a perfect shape to match a larger round wheel like this one. They are very comfortable in my hands, they move freely, and they are very rigid and feel proper. However, they are the only paddle shifters that I have ever tested that just end their motion with a hard step. There is no click, and there is no tactical sensation other than them reaching the end of their motion and making the shift with kind of a thud. This worked fine, and I was able to shift with the same consistency as other shifters, it was just different from other wheels I've used. It's a nice touch to be able to completely control the start and stopping distance of the shifters, and another way that you can really tune this wheel to your overall liking. The buttons on the wheel rim are pretty typical to many other wheels and button boxes out there on the market. They are laid out in a nice manner, and that makes remembering their functions fairly easy Although, I did make some stickers to help out my brain on the fly. 
Of the 12 primary buttons on the hub, it is only the top two and one on each side that I can operate while still holding the wheel and driving. The other 10 and the center button require pivoting of the hand or letting go altogether to operate while driving. The button pressure is medium strength and their depth when pressed is far enough to prevent any accidental button presses unless it's deliberately done. These buttons, like the shifter, reach a hard stop point and there is no click sound or feel in the button. After tuning the wheel to my desires, and after getting used to some of the differences between this and other wheels that I have tested, I was able to drive with total consistency and have already had some of my best races ever while using this wheel. And after an hour of continuous playing, the wheel's base stayed at normal temperatures. One of the best and unfortunately one of the hardest to use features of the AccuForce wheel is the Sim Commander software. With this software, you can literally tune every aspect of the force feedback signal being sent to your wheel. You can turn anything you want on, you can turn anything you want off, and you can actually adjust the independent volume or strength of the force feedback of all of those settings. We could literally spend hours, if not days, going over tuning, options, getting it perfectly dialed in for every scenario that you might throw, it, throw at it, and it's something that, again, is a little hard to use, or at least hard to learn in the very beginning. But with Sim Commander, you have more control over your wheel and how it talks to you than you have with any other wheel that I've ever tested by a long shot. I talk about loving the road noise sensation. Well, I could turn that louder or quieter until it matched what I liked most, or for that matter, I could turn it off altogether. I will say that for the most part, I started off with default settings and then only made slight adjustment to certain features and then only made those changes permanent if I liked the changes and I could tell the difference of what I've changed. This is a whole level of the wheel that you could ignore or spend endless time perfecting for each and every driving scenario. Everything that we have done up until this point has been utilizing the Sim Commander software. This is done by using it with games that fully support the AccuForce wheel, which fortunately for us sim racers is just about all of our favorite titles. However, every once in a while there's a title that isn't supported, or perhaps it's a new game that just hasn't gotten the support just yet, and you don't have to worry about it. You can still work with those games as well. It's pretty simple. You just don't fire up the Sim Commander software. Once the drivers are installed, this wheel will work just like any other standard force feedback steering wheel on the market. The trick is, you just fire up the game, you calibrate your controller, you map your controller, and you just use it. You don't worry about Sim Commander. If you need to adjust the rotation or other settings, you just go into Sim Commander, go to Control Center, then Settings, and then go to the Sim Device Manager. You then highlight the AccuForce and then make adjustments to the wheel for generic settings and then save those settings to the controller. I did this for driving on Wreckfest and it worked perfectly. It was using all of the same settings that any other Windows Force Feedback wheel would use and delivered it through the power and smoothness of the AccuForce wheel. In the end, I found the Sim Experience AccuForce wheel to be one of the best wheels on the market. It is smooth. It is strong, and it has features that aren't even available by a lot of the other direct drive wheels out there on the market. I've told you all about the Sim Commander software and how it affects the driving aspects of this wheel. But Sim Commander, believe it or not, it's actually deeper than that. In addition to doing the force feedback of this wheel, it also has included SimVibe. SimVibe is a tactile transducer controller that is built in and many people will buy a Sim Commander software just for that reason alone. It basically takes a butt kicker from a generic audio driven shaker and turns it into a physics driven shaker perfectly timed with our Sims. In addition to the Sim vibe, Sim Commander also comes with dashboard overlays. This can be awesome for triple screen users when many dashboards of the car's interiors are cut off. This is another piece of the software that people would pay for on their own and that is all included as part of the AccuForce Pro V2 steering system. Just an added bonus. 
So I think I've covered everything, but I mean, there's been so much to cover. There are so many features in this wheel. I think we covered it all, but just to be very clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off, of course, with the good. And the first thing being, this is a very low price for a direct drive wheel. Complete wheel package. Powerful wheel. Sim Commander. Ability to adjust every force feedback setting. Built-in clipping prevention. Saved setup for any car-track combo. Adjustable on the fly via overlay window. Best looking direct drive wheel. Sim vibe included. Dashboard overlays included. Stays cool, no heat. Smooth movement, very rigid wheelbase and shaft. No wiggle or flex in the wheel or quick release. Built-in mount, easy to use quick release. Ability to get profiles from other AccuForce users. And now on to the not so good. And the first one being something that plagues really all direct drive wheels that I've ever tested. And that being the wraparound cable. Fan on the controller box is loud. Complicated software. Heavy wheel mass. Wheel rim feels a little cheap. Center hub is plasticky. Paddle shifters do not click. And now onto the bottom line. Sim racing has really grown up in recent years. And for us sim racers, that's the best thing ever. We have such an incredible variety of wheels, pedals, shifters, button boxes, everything we can imagine to choose from. And they come at a great variety of price points. And at certain price points, you might even have competition or a choice between different wheels, pedals, or whatever to choose from. In the case of Sim Experience with the AccuForce wheel and their new pricing at $9.99, they've really set themselves apart. They've carved out a niche of their own as one of the least expensive complete wheel options available for under $1,000 and giving you 13 Newton meters of direct drive power. And that includes the bonus of the dashboard overlays and Sim Vibe, which is almost a must have for anyone using a butt kicker. So I like to say, or I should say, I like to ask, so who is this wheel for? The AccuForce wheel? This wheel is for those looking to step up to a direct drive wheel. Those who are looking for the advantages that come with a direct drive wheel, that robust sturdiness that rock solid automotive quality feel to the sturdiness and the super fidelity accuracy and the drag free rotation that all comes with it. Who is this wheel for? It's for those who love to control things, for those who like to tune things to the maximum. We could talk about motion. Think of my next level racing motion platform and the amount of time I spent tuning that to my total desire. Well, with Sim Commander software, you can tune your force feedback to your total desire. This wheel's ability to tune is a feature that no other wheel on the market has. And to be honest, all of those other wheel companies should really be taking notice, and I even dare say copying some of its features. Who is this wheel for? This wheel is for those who are looking to step up to a direct drive wheel and get it in a one size, one size fits all, one piece solution ready to go. And to know that when that complete ready to go wheel has arrived, there will be no secondary purchases, no multiple source software, everything you need ready to go from Sim Experience. Now, one other thing I do have to say about the wheel, or I should say, as Uncle Ben Parker said, with great power comes great responsibility. And in the case of the Sim Experience AccuForce wheel and its great power, does come a certain learning curve. To get the most out of it, I really did love using the AccuForce or Sim Commander software, but it was a daunting task. It was hard to dive into, it was not very intuitive, and there was a lot of hours put into just learning the way things work and where they are. Now with the time, the energy, and the effort, 
anyone can learn it and then you can get the most out of the wheel, but it is going to be a little too high tech for some users out there. Now for those looking for the wrist breaking power of the monster size or monster price Bodner wheel, or for those looking for the super size OSW and its power, this wheel at 13 Newton meters, it's not going to break your wrist like those. However, at 13 Newton meters, it was still way too much for me. I found that in every sim I tested it in, I was constantly turning the power down, driving, turning the power down, driving, and going through that sim after sim. It was always too much wheel for me, and that left a lot of room for power to prevent A, clipping, and to know that the wheel is always being worked under its total load that I want from it. And then the only other thing that really comes to mind for me is the wraparound cable. And that's a problem that has plagued all direct drive wheels that they don't have electronics passing through the solid shaft that is within the direct drive motor. Well, in the future, not here just yet, but in the works from Sim Experience is a Bluetooth steering wheel, allowing you not only a wheel rim without a wraparound cable, but it also incorporates a SLI type device. No word on when it'll be available, but it will be a really nice add-on and a game changer for this wheel. So in closing, I'll say this is a really nice racing wheel overall. So not only did I like testing it, but in testing, I ran one of my greatest races. Trailing George Sandman and the Mazda, I ran nearly an error-free race, and that really subjected this wheel to a lot of abuse and a lot of stresses of actually racing, not just testing, and it hung in there perfectly well, and it was a pleasure to drive. Who knows? Maybe it was a little bit of placebo effect. You never know. New things always feel pretty good. So that is going to do it for my review. If there's any information that you are looking for that you don't think I covered, just go to simexperience.com, look up the AccuForce wheel, and you can get all the information there. And of course, if you have any questions of me, be sure to email me at sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll be sure to get back to you as quickly as I can. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when the next review is coming out. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.